<laughs> they go back a long way. They go back a long way. It's a few funny stories. Though. John was the first, the first guy who ever made me want to go on stage performing. I've told you this ages ago, haven't I? When I put the gun behind your head. No, you going... when you're doing Are They Coming Because After Death. Oh. You did this one man show in Liverpool called Are They Coming Because After Death. And I was 17 and I watched it. That's how old this man is. Oh, very old, yeah. The age as well, isn't it? I was in my early 70s then. <laughs> and has it continued, the inspiration that he proved to be at that tender age? I've gone off life? a bit. I think Craig's seen all my cliches now. Oh, yeah. Well, I started doing teachers. Uh, this is the current play, isn't it, yeah, you're involved yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started doing... Uh, this is a big coincidence, because when I started doing teachers, I turned around to John, and he's the only guy I asked to help, to help me. Unfortunately, uh, he was too busy. You know? <laughs> but he offered, he offered, but I never no, got I back to him as well, yeah. But um, I asked him to help me, like, you know, because he's dead clever, isn't he? But he doesn't need, doesn't need the help because he's got great reviews, so you're all right. <laughs> John, um, something we were talking about um, off-camera a little earlier on. Mm. Craig was saying uh, we, we haven't seen too much of him on television recently. We haven't. We've heard a lot of you. You're very much involved in the lucrative market of commercial voiceovers these days, aren't we? Um, John, you too. Now, I mean, yes. such a vast array of voices that you've got uh, the ability to call upon. How can you do what you do with the voice? <laughs> I say, I hope I sound like the person. Shut my eyes. And, but it's very funny you should say that, because Craig and I were doing an ad the other morning. We did an ad, we did an ad together the other yeah. morning. And I was all over the place. I couldn't get it right. I couldn't do it at all. I wasn't in the mood. I'd given up smoking, I have to say that. Yeah. So I was, um, I was quite sort of hyper. But, um, I mean, Craig was doing it like shelling peas, and I was just not in the mood. But doing ads um, is very interesting. I, it's very helpful for people like us who are lucky enough to be asked to do them because they give you the, the right to choose. I think a lot of actors are hamstrung by the necessity of having to do the next job. One of the most important things as a performer is to be able to choose the next job, you know. I like working in the medium of it, though, because our adverts are brilliant. They're really good television, you know, because, like, you know, you've got, like, like, they're like a poem in a way. I mean, you've got, like, 30 seconds or something like that to get the the whole picture in and sell a product, give them the images. Like, so it's like poem in a way, because like, it's all about economy of yeah, words. The, the and other excitement economy for you images, is that you, yeah. you can also write the words, can't you, that you're involved with yeah, at the later I've production stage. Some, I've written some adverts with, yeah, I've written some. And, and that's quite good as well. Yeah. Is, it, is that more difficult, the poem that'll run for two or three minutes or so, mm. or the 30 second poem? What, what, what's more difficult in the creation? Uh, it's, diff it's more difficult writing for, because uh, like, you've got, always got to punch out the punch out the product, punch out the product. You've always got to sort of, like please the client, you know. <laughs> so it's a, a bit difficult to like try to please the client. But I just like working in the medium because it's like another, another medium. And people say, I mean, you know, I, I've acted. I've done poems, I've, I've got a band, we're called The Sons of Golden Gecko, we're doing like music. I've done like all these different things, a lot of writing and that. But um, it's just, if, if you're a painter and you, and, you, and you work in pastels one day and you work in charcoal the next, I mean, no one sort of gets surprised. And if you're a performer, then you perform, you're used mm. to perform. Mm. And it's nice to perform in as many different ways, I think, anyway, mm. you know? I know yeah, you, you used to have a, sorry, yeah. sorry, John. Uh, I know you used to do a one-man show, presumably it wasn't all just reading poems. Almost like all, most, mostly stand-up comedy, you know, but there's about six poems in an hour and a half. I used, to, I used to try and like seamlessly interweave them so you didn't know when the poem was. I hate the sort of like, you know, just to hear a poem, to. you know. Yeah, yeah, you just <laughs> seamlessly <laughs> weave us into another poem, aren't you? Oh, no, no, I'm not, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Have, you, not have, you, given up, have you given up your relentless attack upon the yuppie yet? Oh, I haven't given up yuppies. I, I, I did a poem about yuppies what, when I was on this programme once. It's like, you know, you go to those yuppie parties and, like, and there's, a, there's always a guy there with an old school tie talking about how he bought his house one and six in 1964, you know? There's <laughs> a group in the corner, sort of like, you know, dancing to records of the speeches of Winston Churchill, you know? <laughs> and a light bulb blows and everyone's laughing about it three hours later. I mean, I've, I've been to, like, loads of those parties. <laughs> <laughs> we were nearly there. We were very nearly there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> John, um, mm. we've done it before. It's our version of um, a television repeat Pete, if you like. Uh -huh. Gentleman sat alongside you. He was a great admirer of yours, really? Charles Brandreth. I, I, I think amongst the repertoire is, is a very good Charles Brandreth, isn't it? Yes. Uh, well, uh, um, it's very difficult when the person sitting next yes, to you. Yes, I know. Right? I appreciate it. It's very that. easy, actually, because it helps a great deal if you are sitting <laughs> next to you. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Charles. I never had the sort of same opportunity. No, no, Jimmy. Honestly, it's quite... <laughs> it's very interesting that you should have been a footballer. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, you know, I'll go all that, uh, you know, it's all, it's all gone now. I want Reagan. It must be a terrible loss to mimics. That, that Not really, there. because George Bush 
through the way that they have promoted him has handed an image on a plate. You know when he started, he was going, Hi, I'm bland and tedious, so please vote for me, and uh, there we go. Then as they went, in, <laughs> then as they went on, then the people said, oh, Hey, come on, George, you gotta, gotta beef you up, right? Now, what, because old Ronnie's old thing was, Home on the range, let's talk garbage all the time <laughs> and just make them think of the back of a syrup packet. But with what they did with um, Bush, they changed him. And over the weeks, he started to sound like this. He went, you've got to understand <laughs> that. And he thought, oh, I, know, I know that voice. John <laughs> it's John Wayne. They made, did you notice that? They made him sound like John Wayne. But you know when you're doing um, a lot of voices on spitting image, and mm. let's face it, I mean, British politicians aren't known for their charisma. I just imagine it would be quite difficult it to actually difficult. caricature some Oh, of the very voices. difficult. We used to get tapes. Um, it's very funny. People like, I think, Rory Bremner. Chris doesn't. Chris Barry doesn't work this way. But... Um, Rory works in that quite, he's very much the school of Mike Yard. I mean, I can either get them right or I can't, but we're sent tapes to work up, and you have to do these, you get a tape, and it's somebody going, and of course, the national product, uh, and you think, oh, God, earth you bring this to life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could do that? I can't, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the ability, I mean, I, I've been rehearsing, rehearsing, like, trying to get these accents, like, and I've got a few accents now, but, um, Doing the accent's okay, but like making it sound like someone else, like Sean Connery. Your plans for world nomination are shut on your shirt. With an extremely hairy navel. I know, I, mean, I, I, I really very, can't. Very hairy navel. It sounds right to me, but to nobody else, you know. <laughs> and you good on Scousers? Yeah, I'm good on Scousers. Yeah, I'm good dreadful, on Scousers. That's a dreadful Scouse accent, don't I? Did you do Jimmy Tarbuck? It was awful. Oh, it was your Jimmy, Jimmy Tarbuck, yes. was it on Spinning Image? Uh, yeah, actually, Jimmy Tarbuck wrote, oh, well, somebody wrote for him probably, in, the, in one of the newspapers. Um, <laughs> saying how garbage it was, uh, my impersonation. Only kidding, Lady Di. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, somebody, somebody wrote in the paper. Have you ever and, seen uh, Chris Barry, though? Chris Barry's oh, extraordinary. No. I mean, Chris, Chris Barry is like, he's, he's brilliant. He's, a, he's the best I've seen. What I find interesting Chris is, in, is to, mm. to meet the face behind the voice. That, that's what I always find. Um, Fascinating in this situation. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like it would be jolly good fun to do it in the studio, but I imagine uh, a lot of it would be quite irritating, kind of going doing it over and over again oh, to get well, it. Oh well, we bet. But just mm. something Richard said there about the face behind the voice. Do you remember University Challenge? Yes, Bamba Gascoigne. Uh, that what that voice used to go. University Challenge. Yes. And then asking the questions. <laughs> all imagine it's some huge guy, you know, in a sort of big, <laughs> sort of check shirt. And uh, I did University Challenge about eighty-five thousand million years ago. Really? And um, they had a wee man at a table, a little man with a little red beard. He looked like um, that bloke invented the car that didn't work. What was it called? Clive thing. Sinclair. So, Sinclair. Sinclair. <laughs> and uh, he was sitting there all quiet. We're all ready to go. And there the bling, ding, ding music went. Suddenly this bloke goes, you know what's the challenge? It's like a wee hamster. It's like the mouse that roared. You know? It's incredible. The illusion of television. Only kidding, Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what next? I mean, we've talked about what you have been doing. Um, what next? You're... I'm doing six half-hour solo comedy improvs for the BBC called oh, John Sessions on the Spot, which is not the Who's Line Bits and Bobs, I was just talking to Craig about it, it's all continued. Then it's fairly I'm, impromptu stuff, is it? Or? Oh, totally. Oh, great. And then the Alan Bennett Talking Head series, I've written, they're doing another series of Talking Head monologues written and performed by people. Emma Thompson's doing one, I'm doing one, Barry Humphreys is doing one, three other people, I can't remember who. Uh, and then at the end of the year, I'm taking the Napoleon show I did in the West End last year to America. Have you been a little over, project you, with, uh, with Big Robbie in the summer as well. Have you been Robbie over there yet to see what yes, they make of you? Yes, I was there last week. And what do they, what do they reckon? Um, to make of me? Mm. Well, this, I've been there to see the agents they, who've seen the script, the new script I've written. And they like it. But we're not, the America is something you can, make a, you can make a mess of. You have to plan it like D-Day. If you make a mess of it, they are remorselessly unforgiving if you haven't got it right. I find Americans quite nice in America, you know. I just thought, <laughs> when they come over here, it's like giving them the license to be a fool sometimes, you know. But when I was over there, I thought I'd, I... <laughs> I have his address. When I was over there, I thought I could make a million pounds trying to be the illegitimate son of Paul McCartney, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so global. Like, uh, <laughs> immediately, you're back on the stage. Yeah, I'm doing Teachers at the Arts Theatre. Um, I'm going to film a new Red Dwarf and probably in August, and I'm filming a new What's That Noise I wish you the in April. very best of luck with that, Craig. I'm surprised, John, you found time to give up smoking in amongst that sort of schedule that you've I've had got. to give up smoking. Good I man. was getting... Fairly big arteries and everything. Yep, no, but my age, you see. Well done. And been... you're on the telly tomorrow. Tomorrow night in A Day in Summer, a wonderful story of country folk. It's like a cross between the archers and the Oresteer of Aeschylus. <laughs> or Hamlet. No, it's great stuff. <laughs> the archers with realism.
And Giles, when can we look forward well, to your...